Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how you can get Euler's formula, which is uh, one of the more famous formulas in math, um, by working with a couple of series. So uh, one issue we're going to face is that we don't really know how to get the series, but if you take it um, on faith that these series work, and they definitely do, and when you get to calculus, um, or maybe that's why you're watching this video, uh, you'll learn about Taylor series and Maclaurin series, and you'll um, actually derive these series, and you'll see they're not that hard to come up with, but they're beyond the scope of the class that I'm making this video for. So we're going to have to take it on faith. And uh, so that means that there are three shocking things that we need to know. And the first of them is that sine can actually be written as uh, an infinite sum. So the infinite sum goes from 0 to infinity. It's negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, all over 2n plus 1 factorial. And a lot of people don't like summations, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out a couple of terms of this. So if I let n equal 0, I get um, just x out of this. If I let n equal 1, I get negative x cubed over 3 factorial. Um, so we'll get this x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial. So it alternates. Every other term is positive or negative. Um, and you can see that... Um, Sine is an odd function, and all we're ending up with are um, odd powers and odd denominators, and, and just everything is kind of odd, um, which is good. And when you do get to calculus and you have to memorize this, uh, that's one of the easiest ways to memorize it. It alternates, and it just has odd powers. Um, the next thing we need to know is cosine. So it turns out cosine, you can do basically the same thing. Um, if you think about it, cosine is an even function, so you might almost be able to guess the summation here but uh, you also might not be able to, and that's not a big deal. So it's the sum from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, and then we just have even things, so x to the 2n over the quantity 2n factorial. Make sure you put parentheses around that 2n, because factorial is um, uh, 2 times n factorial, and 2n factorial are definitely not the same thing. And uh, again, I'll write out a couple of terms. So it's 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial, and it goes on forever, so it's infinitely long. And as long as uh, the value of x is in radians, you can substitute anything into sine of x or into the series, and you'll actually get the same value. Uh, the issue is you're dealing with infinity. Um, but if you just take the first, like, uh, four or five terms on your calculator and uh, try plugging into that, you'll see that you get very good estimates of the values of sine and cosine using these um, infinite series, or if you cut them off, you actually just get polynomials. Um, and then the third shocking thing, uh, well, let me summarize the uh, even, even thing. So if you have an even function, which is cosine, um, everything is even. And again, when you get to calculus, that will help you memorize this. Um, the third shocking thing that we need is um, e to the x. So e to the x can also be written as a summation. e to the x is not even or odd, but e to the x actually probably has the easiest of all of them to memorize. Um, it's just the sum from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So it's actually really easy. So that's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. It just has everything. So all the evens, all the odds, just everything showing up. If you look at it, it's almost, it doesn't perfectly work out, but it almost looks like if you added cosine and sine, you would like almost get e to the x. And that's actually kind of what we're going to deal with here. So you almost get e to the x by adding them. Um, so we're going to have to do something a little bit different, but we're going to start with e to the x. So... Here's e to the x written out um, to x to the 5th over 5 factorial. So it's just got all the powers, all the denominators. What I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute i times theta into here. So for every x that I see, I'm going to replace it with i times theta. I'm going to use a different color to kind of highlight that. So every x that I see is getting replaced. And, I mean, there's, there's nothing more to that step. So I've just replaced everything. And it goes on forever. Now what I need to do is, I'm going to simplify this, but to do that I need to remember um, the, the powers of i. So i to the first is i, i to the second is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, i to the fourth is back to 1, and then it just repeats. So i to the fifth is the same, is really, i to the fifth is just i to the first times um, i to the fourth, so that's i. i to the sixth would be negative 1 again, i to the seventh would be uh, negative i. Basically it's the remainder when you divide the exponent by 4 tells you what to uh, what you're going to end up with. But let's simplify. So um, e to the i theta equals 1 plus i theta. i squared, we said, is negative 1, so it's going to be minus, and then we still have theta squared over 2 factorial. 
Um, I cubed, we said, was negative I, so we're going to get a minus I, and then theta cubed over 3 factorial. I to the 4th is 1, so we just get plus theta to the 4th over 4 factorial. Um, I to the 5th is back to I, so it's going to be plus I, and then theta to the 5th over 5 factorial. And then I'm going to do plus dot dot dot. Okay, so, so far, so good. Uh, you can see this is a, an interesting series where it's not like alternating. It's going two positive terms, two negative terms, two positive terms. The next two terms would work out negative. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to regroup this so that I have all the things that don't have I are together, and then all the things that have I are together. So all the things that don't have I, so in parentheses that's 1, the minus theta squared over 2 factorial plus theta to the 4th over 4 factorial plus dot dot dot. Um, I'm going to factor I out and then write all the things that have an I up there. So I, and then it's going to be theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial plus theta to the 5th over 5 factorial, and that goes on forever. And if you look at it, so we have e to the i theta equals, the first thing there, it's all even stuff, which um, if you compare it on the previous thing or you just think back, that's cosine right there. So it's e to the i theta equals... So uh, the first thing we have here, the real part of this, is cosine of theta plus i, and then everything in there is all the odds. So it's um, theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial, theta to the 5th over 5 factorial. So that's all the odds. That's actually the series for sine of theta. So there it is. That's actually Euler's formula. e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. Um, it's a really famous result. Um, probably the, the most famous thing about it, I guess, is if you substitute in pi. You get um, e to the pi i equals cosine pi plus i sine of pi, but the cosine of pi is negative 1 and the sine of pi is 0, so you end up with e to the i times pi is negative 1, which is crazy. You have um, an irrational to an irrational imaginary um, equals uh, negative 1, just a, a rational integer, like a super easy number. Um, and sometimes people rearrange this to e to the pi i plus 1 equals 0, which has kind of the five most famous numbers in math, e, i, pi, 1, and 0, which is kind of a really cool result. So anyway, um, in class we kind of like gloss over this fact and just take the, uh, take the, the formula as kind of a given. Uh, and here we're also doing that because we can't quite get the series yet, but if you're interested in where it comes from, this is where it comes from, and uh, I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.